Octane, we're going to be taking this motorcycle on the freeway. I've been getting some requests. You guys love the video series that we do titled How to Destroy Atheism in a Debate Easily and Effortlessly Every Time. So we're going to be taking this motorcycle. It's a very fun motorcycle. It's a SV1000 made by Suzuki. And um, we're going to be taking it on the freeway and I'll be talking to you about this. So uh, let me show you the camera so we can go hands-free. This camera, when we get on the motorcycle, is going to go inside the helmet here. I notice these Velcro strips. See the Velcro strips? So let's do it. Hold on, I'm attaching it. And you know, I figures I'd have to do this video on a day I have allergies, so you may hear me sniffle throughout the video. I just gassed up. A whole tank of gas, only $9.66. God bless motorcycles. So here we go. Um, the S right here stands for Sinner Saved by Grace. <laughs> and on this motorcycle, whenever you start it up, what you do after you uh, gas up, I should say, is you hold this down to reset your trip odometer. So now I'm zeroed out, so I know I can go about 155 miles or so before I run out of gas. I got the new gloves on. Pretty cool, huh? The new and improved. The new and improved gloves. So let's get started, because I, I, this is going to be... Oh, I got to cover a lot of stuff, like 10 things. And so let's talk about how to destroy atheism in a debate effortlessly and easily every time. I've done over 50 debates and the way you win a debate is not based on charm or personality or style, although those things are cool in a debate, but if you have very good arguments, you'll win your debate. It's the guy with the best arguments that wins, and I've debated well over 50 atheists, I think it's like 52 now, um, and every single debate we've won, as I bow my head very humbly, but, but we've won because we have better arguments. Let's go over here so I can go around this truck. And I'm going to use him to block the traffic because i got to get over here. So. Okay, so let's go through some things because I'm going to take up all 15 minutes of this video and I got a lot of stuff to go. Basically, last night I was in the room, the conference room right here below, shockonow.net, and um, the atheists were going ballistic because uh, <laughs> I was showing them how atheism contradicts itself. I asked the athe atheist in the room, um, would you agree with me that atheists claim that it is possible for God to exist? And they said yes. And I go, would you also agree with me that atheism accepts people that say it's impossible for God to exist? And they said, yes. So I said, so atheism claims, because you have these two claims coming out of atheism. Atheism claims two different things. It claims that it's possible for God to exist and impossible. And then I asked the question, and all hell broke loose, the atheists hate this. It's like their Achilles heel. I said, would you agree that the two claims that atheism makes that it's possible for God to exist and impossible, and this guy in the Mercedes is really right on my rear tire here, uh, contradict each other. I said, would you agree with that? And, and let's get around this guy real quick. Hold on. And the room went ballistic. The atheists were in panic mode. And then I, I got them to admit that those two claims contradict each other. Atheism contradicts itself. See, the Christians believe God exists. There's no contradiction. If someone said they don't believe God exists, how could they be a Christian? By default, they're not. So I proved that atheism contradicts itself. And right there, there's a guy named Seth. He goes, shock you. I want to thank you. Uh, for helping me become a Christian. He left atheism and he admitted it right there in front of the room. There was another guy named Mikey. And Mikey said the same thing. But he, he said this right after um, 
<laughs> right after the contradiction thing where the atheists were going ballistic, he said, yeah, he goes, um, I want to become a Christian also. He, and, uh, and it was awesome. And the atheists were calling Mikey and Seth idiots. All because Mikey and Seth realized that atheism does have a contradiction. So let's go on to the next thing I got to talk to you about. Um, now, what I try to do in debates is I either, what you want to do is you want to get, this is the most important thing of all, you want to get your atheist opponent to answer this question. Is it possible for God to exist or are you claiming it's impossible? See, you want them to answer that because either way you win in the debate. If they claim that it's possible for God to exist, it's game over. Because if they believe it's possible for God to exist, why would they argue against themselves and then in debate postulate that it's not possible for God to exist when they just told you it's possible, you see? So if they say it's possible for God to exist, that's like you won like, you know, half the battle right there because everyone in the room hears the atheist say it's possible for God to exist. So it just embarrasses themselves. So you want to bring them to embarrass themselves. Nothing, it's not a personal battle with them, but we want the room to see how they embarrass themselves because we want them to realize that atheism is not true. Um, or we want them to get them to claim that it's impossible for God to exist. The Christian God, any God. So let's, let's uh, I don't like falling behind these trucks here. So once they say that it's possible for God to exist, they've made a claim, haven't they? They Because atheists don't want to make claims because they can't back it up. They're weak. They're weak in debates. So, or if they claim it's impossible for God to exist, then they must give arguments why they believe God doesn't exist. So that's what you want to do. Now, let me tell you another little secret that I use in debate. It's awesome. You've got to use this. Every atheist in the world must admit that at least parts of the Bible are true. I believe all the Bible is true. But I want to show you this technique when you're in a debate. Just go for a little, just go for a little concession first. And then I call this the foot in the door approach. Once they admit that part of the Bible is true, you've got them. Remember what I told you, you either want to bring them to embarrassment in the debate where they just embarrass themselves or you want to get them to concede. So I'll give you an actual true example. I was in a debate the other night, um, which I won, very humbly speaking, and I won due to the atheist embarrassing himself. I asked, are you willing to admit that parts of the Bible are true? See, as a Christian, I believe the entire Bible, but I want to get this atheist to say either the entire Bible's not true, which is the most embarrassing thing he could ever say because we obviously know Israel exists, and the Bible talks about Israel. We obviously know Jesus and Peter and Paul uh, are historical people, and James. James is even mentioned in uh, Josephus and stuff, and also Tacitus mentions these things in the Bible. So I want to get them to admit that part of the Bible is true. You win either way. If they admit part of the Bible is true, you win, because then they have to admit that parts of it are true. And then you can say, well, which parts are not true? And you can expand it, right? But what happens is the atheists know where you're going and they're trapped. So I was debating this guy and I said, are you willing to admit that at least parts of the Bible are true? I mean, you have to. And he says, no, none of it is true. <laughs> so even the other atheists are like, come on, dude, you can't say none of the Bible is true. That's ridiculous. But this is what I got this atheist to do. So then I said, are you claiming that Jesus never existed? I got him, you see? Now he has to claim that Jesus never existed because Jesus is mentioned also in the Bible. And that's what he did. He embarrassed himself and said Jesus never existed. And even the atheist in the chat room disagreed with him. It's just ridiculous. So you want to get them to to get to a point of embarrassment where they fall on their sword and everyone in the debate that's watching this sees that they're just willing to lie. When an atheist is willing to lie for the cause of atheism and say that the entire Bible is true, it really exposes how full of crapola atheism is 
and shows that they're willing to lie. Now, let me tell you another thing, too. Um, I was in a debate, and I got down to objective moral values, where some things are wrong, because a lot of atheists want to say there are no objective values, okay? i got to get over here on this freeway here on the right. Um, so, I asked the atheist this question, do you believe... <clears throat> in objective moral values. In other words, some things are always good, some things are always evil. He said no, and I said, well, what do you believe? He goes, well, I believe in whatever is for the greater good, like what helps the most amount of people. He's like a socialist, I guess. So listen what I got him to, another part where they embarrass himself. Listen what I got him to admit in the debate. So then you ask him this. You say, well, for the greater good of people, huh? okay, well, let's say you're an employee and you're working at your boss's job. You have one boss. He owns the whole place. And um, motorcycle guy over here on the left. Let's say you're an employee and you have three kids and a wife. See what this dude's on. Yamaha, I think. You have three kids and a wife. Is he delivering a pizza? And um, you have three kids and a wife and you're broke. You need money and they're hungry. You got to feed them and stuff. Well, according to your worldview of atheism, is it wrong for you to steal money from your boss's register, because he's only one person, to feed your kids and your wife? And you know what the atheist said? He said, no, it's not objectively wrong. It's not wrong. In other words, why this? this guy is like, got a ladder and stuff. Let me pass this guy. Boy, there's cops out all over the place today. Let me pass this guy. Peace, brother. Um, and he said, no, it's not wrong. Guys, that's a felony. That's a felony to steal. You see what I did is I, I, and then I said that in the debate, I said, well, you just admitted that on your worldview of atheism, you're willing to commit a felony. Think about that. You can get arrested for that. And he was like, Duh, you know. So let's talk about something else. Okay, this is very important. When an atheist says, well, what about suffering in the world? See, the atheist problem is, here's the argument that they put up. Uh, premise one, if God existed, this is what they say, if God existed, then we would not see suffering in the world. Premise two, they're suffering in the world, so the conclusion that they try to make is, therefore God doesn't exist. Well, this isn't really true, because if you look at the Christian God, clearly he does permit suffering. In many instances, you know, Jesus didn't say, pick up your steak and lobster and follow me. <laughs> he said, pick up your cross and follow me. There's a motorcycle guy up here. I got two minutes of the video. My mission is to see if I can catch up to what he's riding. So the atheist has to show that suffering is incompatible with the Christian God. All you got to mention is Job. Remember when God allowed Job to suffer? for God's glory. All you got to mention is Paul. Remember when Paul prayed for God to remove this affliction from his life, and God said, I ain't going to do it. I'm not going to do it when you are weak, Paul. You are strong for me. Folks, atheism, I have to tell you, is a bankrupt worldview. This is how, this is how you end the debates with these atheists. Bless their sweet little cuddly, huggable hearts. Whoa, I almost got over. Look at this. What you do, I'm trying to catch up to that motorcycle guy. What you do is you tell them the only thing atheism can offer you is death. That's how it ends. This is not my argument. I believe in eternal life. Eternal life, like Jesus Christ said. But atheists believe that everything ends, and I've caught up to the motorcycle guy. Everything ends in death, and he is on a Hayabusa. No, he's on a ZX-14. Awesome. Oh. That's an awesome bike. That's more powerful than my bike. Everything ends in death on atheism. There is no eternal life. The universe dies. Mankind dies. On atheism, the best thing that it can offer you is death. Listen, my friends. Stinking, rotting, pathetic death. A life with no objective purpose. The purpose of atheism is to tell you that you have no purpose. This is the madness of atheism. Or you can choose Jesus Christ, who said, I have come to bring you life and life more abundantly. 
you want death, choose atheism. You want life, choose Christianity. God bless you.